Moments matter because moments have an ability to help us set aside hurts, disappointments, resentment, and even condemnation. We talk a lot about the mission and how we need to move the mission. And while that's so true, the mission will never be moved unless a moment absolutely occurs. In this district, we have countless students that have had moments that commissioned them to move the mission, to move the mission beyond themselves, to move a mission that changes countless lives. So here we are, and so many of us have encountered moments during our time together. So let's not let these moments go to waste. Let's allow these moments to join in the other mission movers to give us momentum to continue to change lives all over the world. Stop trying to be perfect. It's not about perfection. Stop worrying about your past. It's not about yesterday. It's always been about getting a hold and grasping something that helps us discover what God has called us to do. We may all have a past, but we also have a purpose. And while we will never be perfect, we can always pursue perfection, and that is Jesus Christ. So tonight, lift your hands, lift your voice. Let's have a moment with God, and I can assure you that moment will give us momentum to move this mission.
feet to leap for joy. Clap your hands. Come on, Louisiana youth. This is our time to set the atmosphere for tonight. Come on, I need some undignified Pentecostals to begin to leap for joy. some Pentecostals that don't know how you made it here tonight, but you're just glad you're here because it was by the grace of God that got you to this place. Come on, I want another good 30 seconds of praise. Say, God, I'm here tonight to worship you. I'm here tonight to lift you up. to Friday night in Louisiana at a church service. Amen. Hey, there's no better place you want to be tonight than here worshiping with your, with your youth and your friends and your family. Amen. This is the best place you could be. And so thank you so much for coming and worshiping tonight. This is going to be a great night. Come on. This is going to be a great night. Amen. If you would, go and have a seat. I know I'm kind of killing the service, but we got to do some things really quick. We typically don't like to break up the service, but tonight we feel we need to say some things. But why don't you give a high five to someone? Tell them you're not going to have a hold of me because Jesus has a hold of me. Come on, look at the other neighbor that you really didn't want to talk to. Tell them. I'm about to go crazy for Jesus tonight. I do really quick as you're making your way back to your seats. I do want to say a huge thank you to this amazing church and all the volunteers and staff. Come on, let's let them hear it. To let us host this event at this beautiful church, Pastor Johnson and this amazing church. Come on, we can do a little bit better than that. They let us crash this building and occupy it for the past two days and they've gone beyond what I could ever expect to help us facilitate this event, this amazing event, and I want to say thank you to these amazing students for giving up your holiday season to come and to worship God, but tonight we have a special, I was going to say guest, he's not a guest, but a special person here tonight, our superintendent, Bishop Weber, is with us tonight, and I want to invite him to come up and to greet the congregation, if you would give a hand clap as he comes and greets us tonight. may be seated the beautiful presence of the Lord and it is certainly that in this house tonight. I feel the beautiful Shekinah glory of God filling this place. I know he loves to see the elderly with their hands lifted. I know our great God loves to see those that are maybe older than they want to be to exalt him but I just think he has a special place in his heart when he sees teenagers and young adults with their voices lifted and their hands raised and their eyes lifted toward heaven because I believe that's the generation that he's going to use their energy and their perception and their understanding of the times to accomplish great things. And I give honor to Brother Galloway, Sister Galloway, what a team you have leading you. Amen, somebody. We love and appreciate them and they're doing such a tremendous job in Louisiana and Certainly the Goldens and the Cenas and all of their youth team, you're very blessed here in our state, and we're thankful for that. And uh, all of the ministry that is here tonight, I give you honor. Thank you, Brother Johnson, and your tremendous volunteers and staff. This is such a blessing to be able to come 
and to enjoy the wonderful HYC this year in your facility, and y'all are first class, and I ditto what Brother Golden said earlier. Thank you to all of these volunteers that have helped, all of the youth team and their volunteers, uh, all of the musicians, the cameras, the media, everything, sound, they get little uh, to none glory, but I'm telling you, we ought to give them a hand clap. Let me tell you, light makes a difference. Try to praise God in the dark. Try to play the keyboards that we use without electricity. And you'll see real quick, not that we can't praise without any of that, but it sure helps, amen, in this hour that we live in. I'm going to get quickly out of the way, and I want to introduce someone to you tonight. I, I also am so thankful to see the Carsons, and wonderful to have the Wilsons with us tonight. Great to have them in Louisiana. Some years ago, I was praying in the city which I pastored in, in Lafayette, not about an hour from here. And uh, as I prayed, all of a sudden, the presence of God, you know you have that mo those moments when you're in prayer, it just goes to another level. And God really started speaking to me. And uh, I certainly would not say this if he had not spoken to me so specifically, but he began to speak to me about young people. And this is what God began to show me. And as he began to speak in my spirit, I began to see this as like a vision. This is what I saw. I saw that the young people, teenagers and young adults, all over the state of Louisiana, I saw them having and experienced the greatest outpouring of the Spirit, not only in their lives, but in every person they were connected to. And then the next thing that I saw in my mind was altars in churches all over our state filled with cheerleaders and football players, teachers, college professors, and God was showing me this. And then he led me back to your faces, and he said, they are responsible, this generation, for the greatest outpouring, ushering in the greatest outpouring of my spirit in the state of Louisiana. I tell you that sitting in front of me tonight is... This generation is going to see the greatest outpouring. People you're connected to, friends and family, co-workers, schoolmates, God is about to do something in your lives. Amen. As all of these things are taking place in the youth of our day outside of the church, the youth of our day have an agenda, and they are being led in a direction that is just horrendous. The same anointing, Amen. That is, is moving upon you in reverse is moving upon a negative generation. But I tell you, in front of me right now is a group of people, a group of young people and young adults that are going to see that promised outpouring. That in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters, they're the first in line. And God is doing something tremendous amongst us right now so honored to be a part of this great move of the Spirit of God. Right now is the best time to live for God. Right now is the best time to answer a call to preach this beautiful gospel. Right now is the best time to be involved in your church. Get plugged in. Get involved. Get behind your pastor. These are the best times in all of the history of God's church to live for Him and to see the greatest outpouring of His promises in our midst. Would somebody say, I receive it and I believe it? You're very blessed to have the leadership that you have. The Galloways, they are second to none. This hasn't been talked about, but I need to say it. But we were at General Conference this year, and our general youth president was stepping down. That means we were going to vote in a brand new general youth president on the national level. Do you know that our youth president, Brother Galloway nearly got voted in as the national leader over the United Pentecostal Church youth. I can't tell you who I voted for. But I was really telling the Lord, Lord, if it's your will, only if it's your will, let Brother Galloway get that vote. But if it's not your will, I don't want anything to do with that type of situation. We want Brother Galloway and Sister Galloway to be right here in Louisiana. They are leading us. But I wanted to tell you that he was runner-up, runner-up to becoming the national leader over the United Pentecostal Church young people. What a 
what a statement by uh, the United Pentecostal Church brethren and sisters that voted that day. We have a tremendous leader, and we don't want to take him and his precious wife for granted. We love them. They were anointed for this hour. They have taken our young people to heights we've never been. I'm not even talking about fundraising. I'm not talking about all of those. I'm talking, uh, and those things are incredible, but I'm talking about where they walk, where they believe, and where they trust, and where they lead. Would you stand and would you help me welcome our youth president for the state of Louisiana, Brother Drew Galloway. Thank you. You may be seated. Please be seated. Thank you, Brother Weber, for your kind words. So thankful for our district leadership. Amen. Amen. Brother Weber and Brother Shroud, amazing superintendent, district secretary. We don't typically, in Louisiana, it's kind of our DNA, we don't typically interrupt service flow. Uh, if you've been to any of our events, things have been very seamless, and that's always our goal. But I really felt it important tonight to take a moment to pause and show appreciation and acknowledge uh, some amazing people, but also some amazing accomplishments that God has allowed us to experience this year. I want to first say thank you to this amazing church for allowing us to be here. What a beautiful facility that this is. And I'm thankful that this is an apostolic church. Amen. Pastor and Sister Johnson, Brother Leith, and your entire team, thank you for being not just first class, but thank you for being so kind to host us. Can we give it up for this church? Come on, LDYM. We can let them know we're thankful tonight. What a privilege it is to be in such a beautiful place. LDYM is special for so many reasons, but most notably for so many amazing people. I give honor to all state worship. This is one of the most incredible ministries I've ever seen, and I give honor to Sister Houston and the band and their leadership team for doing an amazing job with the music. To Pastor Pavlou and all of the sound gurus from your church and abroad, thank you for always being so excellent. To Brother Michael Gomez and the creative team, I'm so thankful for everything that you do. These are people that work so tirelessly, and they are so gifted, and I'm very thankful that they lend their talents and abilities, and I can promise you they don't do it for money, uh, or they would be somewhere else tonight. But I'm very thankful for their love and heartbeat for this state. To Brother Rippy and the media team, thank you. Thank you for making Louisiana what it is. We we have a standard that we uphold as excellence. We believe with no apology that we are top tier and people compliment our state everywhere that I travel. And I make sure to let them know that is not me, but that is a lot of amazing people that are way more gifted than I am. But I honor you, Brother Dawson, all of our media people. Thank you to our LDYM committee. This has been a unique year. 60% of our committee is brand new. Eight out of 13 of our reps are brand new, but these Men and their wives have stepped onto our committee, and they have done an amazing job. And I want to say thank you to every sectional director for what you do in LDYM. To our executive team, some of my closest friends, Brother Levi and Sister Megan Golden, Brother Michael and Sister Hannah Senna, some of the greatest leaders. But more than that, these are great people. And I want you to know publicly from the bottom of my heart, it's an honor to serve with you. These are some great, great people. Some Bozier and Lake Charles people ought to be making some noise right now. To my wife, Summer, thank you for always being so amazing. To the pastors and youth pastors and parents that are in this building, thank you for believing in LDYM. I understand that this is a crazy time of the year, and this is a new event for us. This is not really woven into the fabric of who we are, just quite like camps and statewide, but we're getting there. But thank you for being intentional. Every pastor, every youth pastor, every volunteer, every parent, thank you for making sure your kids got here. Somebody give it up for your pastor your youth pastor, and your parents. If you think you've got the greatest, you ought to clap a little louder than the other youth groups. And to the greatest students on planet Earth, to the students of the Louisiana District, thank you 
for who you are and what you embody. You are so passionate for the things of God, and it's such an honor to serve such an amazing group of students. 2023 has been an amazing year. We started a statewide in March with over 5,000 people in attendance, perhaps the largest single gathering of any district young people in the UPCI. It was an amazing night. We had several students that received the Holy Ghost for the first time. At our two camps in June, we had 1800, eight, over 1,800 students between the two weeks, and over 150 students received the gift of the Holy Ghost for the very first time. At our camp meeting youth service, we passed out over 1,000 Bible studies, and we commissioned every single one of you, don't just keep this gospel to yourself. This is more than just a feeling, hypes, and moments, but you can take the gospel, you can sit at a coffee table, you can sit at a coffee shop, and you can open it up and teach somebody the word of God. And we've seen that engage, and we've seen lives be changed because of the students that are in this room that made up their mind, I'm not keeping this gospel to myself. Come on, is there anybody in the room that has your mind made up? This gospel is for whosoever will. And at our Youth Workers Weekend in October, over 100 youth workers gathered there in Bossier City. It was such a cool time. This is the first time we were ever able to do it for free. Our youth workers didn't have to pay for anything, and we, they were poured into in Bossier City. We had an amazing weekend. And then for Move the Mission, in March, we launched our Move the Mission campaign. We were the first district to ever give $500,000 to move the mission. And that's incredible. But I don't believe in just maintaining or just kind of taking your foot off the gas. I believe God wants to do more. So I said, in 2023, why don't we just go for 600000 It seemed a little crazy at first, but I'm thankful to report to you that this year we gave $650,000 to move the mission. Come on, I think we ought to take a moment right now. <laughs> Thank you. Come on, it's more than just dollars in an offering bucket. But it's lives being changed. It's missionary getting a vehicle. It's somebody hearing that your sins can be washed away for the very first time. Come on, Louisiana. I said it in March. I echo it again. This is our time. This is our time. This is our time. I want you to remain standing, and if you're not standing, I want you to stand. But here was the challenge. And thank God for so many amazing churches. I see pastors represented tonight that represent churches that love missions. But I said, Louisiana, you, this just can't be about pastors writing checks. Somewhere there's got to be a teenager where the mission becomes personal. And you say, I'm going to do my part. Just a few years ago, we had no real McCoys, no mission movers. But I'm thankful to report that this year we had over 90 students engaged in the Mission Mover Real McCoy program. And for the first time in Louisiana history, the students was the largest giver in this amazing state. I'm telling you, this is only the beginning. We did 500,000, we did 600,000, and I'm telling you, we're not far away from doing 700,000 because there is a generation that says, I'm not sitting on the sideline, I'm not here to just take up space, but I want to get involved, I want to make a difference. We got a reason to celebrate tonight, we got a reason to give God praise tonight. I want you to step out of your seat. I want you to come to the front where or wherever you can. I want you to throw your hands in the air. And I want you to lift your voice. And I want you to let God know we've got a reason to praise. We've got a reason to praise. Come on, Louisiana, as they begin to sing, lift up your voice and give God praise for what he has done. Oh, somebody lift up your voice and give him praise in this place. Come on, clap those hands.
Praise when I dawn. 
Come on, I need you to get loose in this place right now and praise them like nobody's watching. Yeah. Hey. I will crush this to fall. I wonder if you would lift up your hands. And right now, would you just begin to lift up some more praise and worship? Come on, if you know that he's able to do anything, we give you praise, Lord. We give you worship, Jesus. Put my trust in the 
you believe it in this place? so much goodness and grace it's much more than we deserve and I can stay where I'm at cause we've come this far by faith and I just can't turn back cause he's not done with me do you believe it in this place? He's not done with me. Because there's so much more to this story. He's not done with me. Because you're not done with me.
let's praise him all over the house come on if you're thankful if you're thankful for his mercy if you're thankful for his grace come on you haven't run so far you haven't done so much that he's done with you he's not done with you you wouldn't be here tonight if he was done with you amen hey if you're thankful for this incredible team that's been leading us in worship you ought to let them know come on we've clapped for everybody tonight we ought to clap for them Y'all are incredible. Thank you for leading. I really think you're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're, you just keep at it. You just keep at it. Jake, you keep giving him tips. He's going to get there. Faith, that was some powerful singing. They, we're blessed in Louisiana. These musicians, these singers, wow. All right. Turn in your Bible to 2 Samuel chapter 6. 2 Samuel chapter 6. Thanks, Brother Weber, District Board, for allowing me to be here. Always counted an honor. Thanks to my friends, the Galloways. Love and appreciate them. This youth team, it really has been a joy to be partnered again with the Wilsons. We love them. Brother Wilson, uh, I'm going to tell him myself, nobody knows this. He came to preach for us at Calvary uh, last year. I don't know. I think it was last year. And we treat our evangelists so good that we took them to Taco Bell and we ate in the parking lot. Didn't even get them a seat inside. We just ate in the parking lot. If you ever want to do well, make it to Calvary. Take care of you. And... Uh, I don't know why everybody, including my wife, was so excited about going to Taco Bell. Fourth meal. Fourth meal. Love and appreciate this team. It's so good. The just rare opportunity my parents to have been in town and be here for this event. Certainly to be here. Tommy and Sheila and TJ, my cousin. We just it's just cool. Cool to be together. Brother Johnson, my friend, this great church. I echo all the remarks. Second Samuel chapter six. I'm going to read verses 13 through 21 of a familiar, familiar narrative in the Old Testament about the transportation of the ark of the Lord. And it was so, everybody say it was so, when they that bear the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings and David danced before the Lord it was undignified we sang about it I do fear we're better at singing about it than activating it but we're going to activate it tonight you've been worshipping you've been worshipping but a lot of people in the room you've taken the excuse that it's so crowded you can't problem is there's probably people in clubs in this very town that think more highly of their opportunity to worship the things of this world I'm going to make sense of this he danced with all of his might and David was girded with a linen ephod so David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet it was loud and it's been loud here. If you don't like loud, don't come to Louisiana. I tell you that it's been, it's been loud. It's been loud. Somebody walked out last night and said, "I didn't know how loud it was until I." It's all right. I promise you'd rather have to calm it down than try to get a dead church to live. It's David and all the house of Israel brought up that ark of the Lord. It was with the sound, with shouting and the sound of the trumpet, and as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, Saul's daughter, looked through the window and saw King David. What was he doing? He was leaping. He was dancing before the Lord. 
And she despised him in her heart. Everybody say despised him. Turn to your neighbor and tell him she despised him. And they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in his place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And as soon as David had made an end of offering the burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. And he dealt among the people, even among the whole multitude of Israel, and well to the women as men, every one a cake of bread and a good piece of flesh and a flag and a wine. So all the people departed, everyone to his house. Then David returned to bless his household. How many know you always got to go home? <laughs> It's good to have good church, but then you got to go home. David returned to bless his household, and Michal, the daughter of Saul, the daughter of Saul, she came out to meet David. He said, How glorious was the king of Israel today? Any girls in the room, you know how to be sassy. Come on, you lie, you fry. You know what I'm talking about. You know how to say it. Sometimes when we read our Bibles, we speed read just to try to get through it. And so we read it like this. How glorious was the king of Israel today and covered himself in the eyes of the Lord. But I'm going to tell you how, how Michael, how his wife, Saul's daughter, said, how glorious was the king of Israel today who uncovered himself Today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovereth himself. She's snooty. She's sassy. She's got an attitude problem. She's supposed to be his wife. But that's another message. And David said unto her, It was before the Lord which chose me before thy father and before all of his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore will I play before the Lord. He looked at Michael and said, I wasn't dancing for you. I wasn't dancing for you. The Bible says when she saw him dancing, she despised him. And then later she let him know. But when she did, he let her know, I wasn't dancing for you in the first place. I don't care if you like my worship. Somewhere along the way you got mixed up and thought I worshiped you. And if you really want to trace the story, there was a season in Michael's life where she was taken from David because of the angst and the dynamics with Saul. And she's given to a man that when David calls for her back, that man follows after her down the middle of the road crying after her. And any time that you think you're to be worshipped more than God is to be worshipped, you get in a dangerous place. But I came tonight, and I believe the Lord would have me to preach this to you in the form of a question. Do you even have a dance worth despising? Turn to somebody you really like. <laughs> and ask them that question. Do you have a dance worth despising? Turn to somebody else. Give them the best smile you own. Come on, show them every tooth you own legally. And ask them the question. Do you have a dance worth despising? Now I'm going to do something tonight that should be every young person's dream. I'm going to tell you this, you can stop my preaching anytime you want tonight. I'll be done, and I've just, I got to tell you, I've been doing this a long time now. I'll be done 
when you prove that you got it. All right? How about in the balcony? Is that all right? Now we gotta have we gotta have multiple altar opportunities here tonight because some of you have been using the cop out that you can't get down front. You don't have altar space. So this is an altar. Everybody in the back section, you got another whole row. I went and walked it last night just to make sure that's an altar. All of you in the balcony, you got that road down next to the glass and all those big thoroughfares by the doors. Those are altars, okay? Nobody gets to use the excuse tonight that you don't have somewhere to go. You don't have to go far. Some of you might have to just step out in the aisle tonight. Say, wait a minute. Now, Pastor Carson, what does that mean? It's just you reminding hell and you reminding every naysaying Michael in your life. If I'm going to be despised for something, I want to be despised for worshiping God with all of my heart. Come on, Louisiana, this is not a game. This is God's hour for God's young people to get serious about a move of His Spirit. Would you lift your voice and pray with me right now? God, we feel you in this house. I want to somehow... Somehow, preach your word with wisdom and clarity. I, I do want to preach with sensitivity, but most importantly, sensitivity to the text. I ask that you would work on our hearts and our minds. I pray that you would work against those of us that have allowed the fact that we're an introvert to be an excuse. Those of us that are shy, we've used that as an excuse. I pray that you would allow there to be freedom, and liberty in this house tonight as we unabashedly and unrestrained we worship and we magnify you, O oh God. We ask it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And let everybody say amen. God bless you and you may be seated. I am thankful, yea, verily, King James and all, I am thankful that we still believe in magnifying God, that we still believe in demonstrative worship in the church. I am thankful that our youth conventions our youth camps, and even, Brother Weber, those precious elders in our camp meetings, we still believe in running aisles. I just want to see what your response is like when no one's on the drums. We still believe in leaping for joy. We still believe in lifting our voice and shouting with a voice of triumph. Even now, at the close of 2023, walking into 2024, we still believe that if we hold our peace, come on, there, there should never be a one God, Holy Ghost-filled believer that does not believe in worshiping God. Now, I will tell you this, and I want to be very clear from the beginning. You don't have to praise God like me. I am a very passionate individual. I understand that. I, I, I am demonstrative. I am one of those guys that is good to run and shout and jump and dance and sweat and praise, I'm, I'm one of those guys. Now, you don't have to be one of those guys that does circles or one of those gals that breaks your high heels dancing. But I will tell you this, you got to do something. You doing your best impersonation of a mannequin and calling it church. Let me ask this question as I get started here tonight. Why? 
Why would we ever get to the place where we can't be challenged from the pulpit? I hope that we can still, and I believe in Louisiana we can, still have challenge that comes from the pulpit that tells us things like I'm about to tell us tonight. It is right time for the church to be more on fire for God than we have ever been before. I would ask you a question. If they could roll in the dirt in brush harbors and if they could run aisles when there was no air conditioning and if they could shout all night when they were using bullhorns and not microphone, how much more should we who have the privilege and the blessing of our modern technology say, look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. From the youngest to the oldest, from the front to the back, from the main level to the balcony, I still believe let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Hell didn't like it. Michael didn't like it. The Pharisees didn't like it. And you ought to have people in your life that don't like it either. I would tell you this. If nobody in your life despises your dance, you don't have much of one. I'm going to say something I know is strong. And I hope it's okay. Why is it okay that the coach can yell at us, but we get offended if the minister? I watch parents that will let the coach talk degrading to their children, but are ready to change churches. I'm going to preach what I feel for us here tonight. We've got to have a move of God, both individually and collectively, regardless of whether people like it or not. And if you're waiting on everybody in your school to like you, you've got to get more interested in being apostolic than being popular. Yes, I want you to win them, but not at the expense of losing you and not at the expense of losing who you are. Come on, you are a one God apostolic. You are a tongue-talking child of God. I'm talking to the dancers and the non-dancers. If anybody's sitting by you, you ought to slap them and say, don't you believe what he's preaching right now? Do you believe what he's preaching right now? Here's what I'm preaching. David came to a resolute determination. In 1 Chronicles chapter 10, it reads this way. He called to the leaders and the elders and said, don't you think we should get the ark back? He used these words, for we have neglected it during the time of Saul. It's dangerous lest we ever think we can lead without God's presence. I thank God for our talent, and if anybody's got it, Louisiana has got it. But our talent won't set drug addicts free. Our talent won't break addiction. Our talent can't fill anybody with the Holy Ghost. Our talent can't change anybody's eternity. But when we take our talent and we take our ability and we surrender it to the king of all kings. David said we've got to go. And to save you the time of a story most of you already know. They make that They make that journey to retrieve the ark of the Lord. The problem is when they go to retrieve the ark of the Lord, they put it on a new cart. Let's have a sped up move of God. I love this generation. 
I've tried to make sure no one's voice was a stronger or a louder advocate for this generation. This guy right here, my dear friend, your youth president, loves this generation. I don't know anybody among us that is a stronger advocate for this generation. I think we're in agreement about this. We believe in you. If anybody believes in you, we believe in you. So I want to remind you, when you try to put the presence of God in a new cart, when you try to put service in a microwave, you want Ruth's Chris filet with microwave time. I'm coming after this tonight because I feel it. Because there's kids right now under the sound of my voice, you don't think anything of your coach asking you to be there for two a days in August. But you can't remember the last time you showed up for a long prayer meeting. We're offended when it's we're offended when it's a call from the church, but if we can make a little cash. There's kids under the sound of my voice. You're driving cars you can't afford to impress people you don't know and you've not given a dime to missions in the last... The 90 to 100 he was talking about wasn't you. And I'm going to tell you right now, they might love your car, but they don't despise your dance. I want to help heaven and I want to make hell mad tonight. That's my only agenda. The vision your district superintendent saw about you winning your, yeah, the varsity football player and the prom queen and everybody else. I'm going to tell you how that vision comes to fulfillment when we make a clarion call and we make a clear determination. I'd rather have a move of God than anything else. They put that ark on a new cart and the Bible says that as they're going to get to nation's threshing floor and the oxen shook it, it's easier to let something else pull his presence than for you to carry it. Pull us along, preacher. Preach something we haven't ever heard. Preach something we haven't ever heard and preach it in about 24 minutes. The oxen shook it and Yuza put forth his hand to steady it. And it's dangerous when you think you are the steadier to the presence. And when he puts his hand forth to steady the presence of God, the ark of God. And I do believe Yuza did it out of reference, but I also out of reverence, but I also think he did it out of reflex. And any time that your reflex is contrary to the purpose and the will and the design of God. And the Lord smote him there. David is angered. He's bothered. The place is named Perez Yuza, the breaking forth against Yuza. And the ark is taken off and it is placed at the house of Obed-Edom. And it stays there. There is a turmoil that has shaken through. Can you imagine that David has put out the call? We need the ark of the Lord. We need it to come back. We need the presence of God. It was neglected during the leadership of Saul. And everybody has agreed. And while they are trying to return with the ark, a man has died. And all eyes look to David. And David's eyes look to God everyone is confused and they seem none the better but even the worse for the ark is still gone it's placed in another's house and they've lost a good man there at the and what has happened until internal examination begins to occur it is a it is a frustrating thing to me to consider that just because there is failure that we would not try again. I'm going to tell you, David, that ark doesn't belong at Obed-Edom's house. But because of one mishap, we lose this large swath of time. And many under the sound of my voice, you have lost so much time over one mishap. I come to preach to you tonight. 
It's time to get it back. It's time to get back to the prayer warrior you used to be. It's time to get back to the worshiper you used to be. It's time to get back to that reckless. Come on, when you didn't care what they thought about you, you didn't care what they said about you, you didn't care if your suit got messed up. All you wanted to do was get a move of God. What if they talk about me? What if they make fun of me? What if they laugh and tell jokes about me? Yeah, but what if you have a move of God? And when they go after the ark, that next time, they take the auction with them. They take the fatlings with them. They take the trumpets with them. They take the elders with them. Should we really try this again after what happened last time? We're going to do it the way we should have done it. The first time. I am all about new church. I, I love it. Here we go. This new church. These new church. New church. No problem. I like it. I enjoy it. Come to Calvary. We painted a wall black. I don't care what color you paint your wall. I don't care how many lights you buy. Anybody out here that thinks you're feeling what you're feeling because of those? I don't care how many screens you buy. There is one way to have a move of God. There is one way to have a move of God. You got to be willing to say, I'll go wherever I got to go. And I'll sacrifice whatever I got to sacrifice. I'll dance whenever I got to dance. I'll worship however I've got to worship. And whoever needs to despise me, let them just, they can sit in the window and despise me. But I am going to have a move of God. I need some youth group right now that says, I don't care if they call us the religious group. I don't care if they call us the fanatical group. We are going to have a move of God. They marched to that house. And notice this. It's a six-mile stretch of dirt road between the house of Obed-Edom and the city of David. They were going to stop every six paces. Over a thousand gallons of blood were going to hit the dirt trail in a six mile stretch. They were going to sacrifice in that stretch nearly 5,000 animals. You know why? They brought something with them to worship. One of the greatest dangers of the way we try to move his presence on a new cart is we try to get something out of worship instead of bringing something to worship. If the song is good, we'll worship. I'm going to get after this for just a minute. If the song leader is good, if they sing a song I like, and we're guilty young and older alike on this, if they sing it the way I like it, then it will move me. Oxen and fatlings are sacrificed because you brought them with you. Here's my question. What do we bring to church in anticipation of a move of his spirit? If you think worship will cost you nothing, you don't know what worship is. Can I go with this just a little bit? 
Worship cost them the weight of getting the ark on their shoulders. Every young person under the sound of my voice, you need to hear me clearly. You are a royal. Come on, chosen generation, you're a royal. Quit focusing so much on the peculiar word in that verse. Peculiar. King's kids are not like everybody else. And you got to feel the weight. You need to feel the weight. How about when you go home Sunday and nobody's worshiping? What if you were the one that felt the weight? Yeah, but if I start worshiping, people are going to look at me. Yeah, but you might get heaven's attention too. I want heaven to peer over the balcony and be able to look at some 15-year-old that says, I got to have a move of God in my youth group. We got to have a move of God. You say, well, I'm not, that, I'm not from that kind of family. I'm not asking what kind of family you're from. I'm asking what kind of dance do you have? She saw him leaping and dancing. I'm going to let the people that don't dance, but you're leapers. Come on, anybody, anybody, unless you've got a physical impairment. Any, come on, even those of you, your vertical is so small, couldn't get a sheet of paper. Listen to me. We don't do that because it's our tradition. We don't do that simply because it's our custom. We do that because when we get in his presence and we begin experiencing the mighty and the powerful presence of God, we become exuberant and our demonstrative. We want a move. Girls, you look beautiful. You do. But if you can't remember the last time you messed up your hair dance. <laughs> I felt some of you right there like, don't, don't, don't go. Don't, don't. This took, this took. The average student spends a lot longer getting their outfit ready for church than they do getting their spirit ready. It's just the truth. We listened to worship groups we didn't pray for and preachers we didn't pray for. <laughs> this may be my last time. Here, here we go anyway. You listen to me. Young men, if you can't remember the last time you did this, I'm going to liberate every dude in the room right now. I give every guy in the room that looks all sharp this, this right here is called your index finger. Okay? I want you to take your tie right here like this. Oh, my Lord, that feels good. Now, some of you aren't doing it. That's okay. You, you don't have to do it. You don't think that matters. Some of, you, some of you are not doing it. That's okay. Some of you think what I'm preaching about is silly right now. But I've been standing on the front lines of this battle fighting for gender identity. I've been standing on the front lines of this battle trying to stand for holiness and righteousness and God. And the last thing we need is a bunch of kids that look like they're in church but don't really know how to demonstratively worship God. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. If it was... Come on, I want that old fashioned move of God when we left church slain in the spirit, drunk on the Holy Ghost, ties were undone, hair was messed up, shoes were danced off, bobby pins on the ground. Come on, the old David, how far are we going? One, two. Three, four, five, 
six. I couldn't even get to you from the... You can't get far without worship. Six paces. And they would stop and here was an oxen. And here was a fat leg. And they would kill them there. I don't know who would agree with me here. But after six days not in church... I need to get my carcass. I got parts of me that need to die every time I get in church. Can I tell you what we cannot afford to do in Louisiana? We cannot affect, we cannot, we cannot allow ourselves to have the effect where we have normal, average, mundane church. Where we live from event to event hoping that camp will save us that Youth Congress will save us, that HYC. Everybody that's been worshiping with this crowd, when you walk into church on Sunday, there ought to be a part in the service where you sacrifice some oxen and some fatlings and you remind yourself whether you go to a big church or a little country church, it's not about who's on the Come on, it's not about who's on the keyboard. It's not about who's in the sound booth. It's about the God that saved you from your... The oxen and fatling had to die. And I would tell you that our flesh has to die. I'm going to say something tonight. While I'm already in the middle of this, I walked directly to my wife after the Lord spoke to me. I said I was done in the mic so I didn't come back up and touch it again. But as soon as I got down into the altar last night, the Lord spoke to me. In all of the decades now of doing this and all the HYCs, it's the first time the Lord has ever spoke this to me at an HYC. And I want you to hear me clearly. I got right down in this altar last night and the Lord told me there are kids in this room that have allowed their relationship, their boyfriend and their girlfriend have become their substitutes for me. Where's my friend, Brother Wilson? Brother Wilson, you got to talking today about emotions that we're giving. We're giving to shows, different things. And we come in, you were spot on, spot on. We don't have any emotion left to give him. But the Lord, so I took it to prayer. I went and told my wife. I took it to prayer. I got on the friend, phone with my best friend, Brother Bounds, today. And I began to talk through what the Lord had showed to me. And, and, and the Lord began to speak to me. I said, Brother Bounds, the Lord began to show me that they are crossing sexual lines and excusing it because the voice of the person they're dating has become the voice of God to them. Let me, let me remind us of something right now. You say, how does this fit? I'm going to tell you how it fits. It fits because sexual sin is sin against your own body. According to this book, it's sin against your own body. And if you can't bring your own flesh into subjection, you cannot be someone that is genuinely a worshiper of God. And you better be careful, young man or young lady, because the ministry that God has for your life is going to be derailed by some person that you're... I'm coming after this right now. It's my last opportunity. Hear me. I'm going to come after this right now. Yeah, but if, if I go all in for God, they're going to break up with me. Let them Let them go. If you got to choose between your anointing and them getting too handsy with you. If you got to choose between your calling. I'm talking to somebody, man. I'm, there's a few of you. I'm reading your mail right now. I'm reading your text message right now. You better listen to me right now. You're not worshiping God anymore because you're worshiping them. Oh, Pastor Carson, I'm not worshiping them. You're not worshiping them? You talk to them for hours. You sit on the phone, listen to each other breathe. You've sent them pictures you thought you'd never... 
you said things to them you thought you'd never say. I'm going to tell you how, I'll tell you whether or not you've crossed lines. Do your parents have unrestricted access to your phone? I'm a nightmare to be your parent because randomly I can pick up anybody's phone. Oh, that's child abuse. No, it's child protection. It's child protection. Why am I preaching about this? I'm going to tell you why. Because the crux of this story is David is linked up with some gal. You better be careful who you date because they might become who you marry. And you better be careful who you marry. If you're called to be a worshiper and they despise worship, you better... Anybody in the balcony believe what I'm preaching tonight? I can remember having a call to preach on my life and walking out of baseball practice to go to a Bible quiz tournament. I'll never forget my baseball coach looking at me saying, you can't leave this practice. What, what, what do you mean, coach? You can't leave this practice. We got a game. Me and Greg, I can still remember me and Greg walking out to head to a Bible quiz tournament. Mom and Dad are here. Thank you for making sure I was more interested in going to a Bible quiz tournament than staying for some small town baseball team. The practice he was interested in wasn't the practice I was interested in. I was practicing having a move of God. What I didn't know when I was 16 years old is I was practicing then to preach to you tonight. And so I want to preach to you what I was practicing then. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. That's what I was learning at the other. At one practice, I was standing like this, making sure I was getting my glove ready. At another practice, I was walking in saying, now as Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And I promise you, my little small town baseball team wasn't going to take me anywhere, no matter how good I was. But the other kind of practice and worship I got invested in has put me on platforms all over the world. Wait a minute, but if I give everything to God, my coach isn't going to like it. Your coach might not like it, but your heavenly father might love it, and it might... You've done good. You want to shut me down. We're almost there. Some of you came because you really want to pray. Some of you came because you're like, if he stops on time, we can go. Does anybody remember that even Jesus had been prophesied that he would be despised and rejected. And in the gospel he said, you will be hated. Part of our problem is every, we want everybody to like us. If everybody likes you, you ought to be nice. I don't want anybody to be like, he said people don't even have to like me. I just do whatever I want to do. That's not what I'm talking about. You don't have a license to be a jerk. If you got the spirit, you ought to have the fruit of the spirit. Love and joy and peace and gentleness and meekness. You ought to have those things. And people ought to be drawn to you. But we better remember that we are in a spiritual war. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And We remember that. So when you begin to worship and begin to completely commit and you decide our youth group is going to have an absolute move of God, we're going to have a worshiping move of God. We're going to get the present, even if it's six paces at a time, and we got to sacrifice all kinds of stuff. I promise you, when you start sacrificing stuff, you'll take stuff that was in your closet, get it out of your closet. You'll take music that is on your phone, get it off of your phone. You'll take stuff that is in your queue, and you'll get it out of your queue. You'll find relationships that were there and you'll get rid of them. You'll find marijuana that was in the bottom drawer and you'll burn it up and get rid of it. You'll 
Come on, these are real life things. But when you get sold out, somebody, That's not necessary. It's unnecessary. Look at him. Michael's biggest problem is that David wasn't dancing for her. It's the truth. Read the text. Read all about her. She's got a problem. She so despised David because he did not worship her. That God shut up her womb and she never produced. Because when you hate worship, you cease the ability to produce. There's people in this room, you're frustrated that you're not producing anything good in your life. I'm not saying you're not making money, but you're not producing. Some of you are making money and still not happy. I'm going to tell you why. Because you worship you and not God. And any time... Any time the object of your affection has turned from God to things of this earth. <laughs> if I worship, if I really go all in, preacher, I don't even think they're going to want to be my friend. How are you supposed to win people that don't think you're any different than they are? I'm going to say something. I've been saying things all night, so while I'm on a roll here, I guess, our goal is not acceptance. Come on, Louisiana. Our goal is not acceptance. Our goal is conversion. Why are we scared of that? That is not a bad word. Our goal is Bible studies where we can sit across the table where we can tell some friend about the goodness of God and the grace of God. The worst thing you can possibly be guilty of is to go your entire high school experience and nobody even knew you were Pentecostal. Let me tell you something. You do that, nobody despises your dance. You know why? Nobody has to. When he got up and prophesied, that vision that whether he shared that before Brother Weber or not, what he saw in that vision, the way that that happens is when young men and young women. I, you good at football? I love it. Great. If your pastor's good and your parents are good, be the best. But if you worship that pigskin more than you worship God, You like volleyball? You good? You, ah, ah. you good? Pastor's good? Parents are good? You're good? Got all that? Okay. But if you give more time to those drills. Come on, where are my young men in the room? The only kind of fasting you know is intermittent because you got into lifting weights. You slam protein, but not Pentecost. What am I preaching tonight? I'm preaching we got to be unashamed of who we are. We're not ashamed of this. We need a move of God, David, whatever it costs. Whatever's got to die. If it's got to take my agenda, if it's got to take my ego, if it's got to take my plan, if it's got to take my career dream. Yeah, well, if I went to a church that was more on fire, Do something about it. Do something about it. The New Testament, 
The New Testament plan of worship, you can find it in the story of the prodigal son. Go to Luke 15 and you'll find it when the prodigal son returns. Remember this? The Bible says he came to himself, pig pen, comes home. What happens? His father sees him. You want your church to go crazy? Let some prodigal that's been gone. Let me ask you a question. What would happen on Sunday if your backslidden brother or your backslidden sister or your backslidden friend came walking through the back door? This is what should happen. It should be a celebration. What if people told you stop jumping? What if people told you stop shouting? I don't care if they despise my dance. We're trying to get something that was lost. But even in the story of the prodigal son, the father says, get the sandal, get the ring, get the fatted calf, get the preparation, get it in. Everybody, the whole church is having a party. And one dude, one Brother, what's going on? What's all the noise? What's all the rejoicing about? He was dead. He was gone. He's home. How can you not rejoice about that? I tell you when you can't rejoice about that, when you're focused on When prodigals come home, we're going to dance whether the brother likes it or not. When we want a move of God, we're going to dance whether people like it or not. Where are my leapers? You're not a dancer. You just a... Where are my people that you just wave your hands? You just, come on, you just wave your hands. You're... This is who you are. You don't have to dance. You don't have to leap. But you got to worship him in some way that makes hell nervous. Come on, you got to do something that hell despise. Come on, what would happen, Louisiana, if we really made up our mind going into 2024? I'm going to be the kind of worshiper that hell hates. I'm going to have the kind of dance that hell despises. I'm going to be the kind of soul winner that hell cannot stand. I... I wish I could have been there when David talked to Michael. I don't know what it is about my personality that I want to be there. When she gets all sassy. How glorious. <laughs> Didn't you look good? Some people in this room, you have been you have been so beat down not to worship because of other people's opinions how glorious was the king real cute took your Priest King Robe. Great job, David. Dancing out there with the handmaids. That was real cute at convention. I saw you run up front. Acting like we don't know who you really are. <laughs> that was cute at convention. Saw you hopping around. How glorious did you look acting like you were a worshiper? I wish I could have been there with popcorn in the corner. Hmm. You gotta smack her, boy. Hmm. When they 
David looked at her. Your daddy didn't pick me. God chose me for this. I wasn't dancing for you. I wasn't dancing for your daddy. I wasn't dancing because of this office. It was the Lord that called me. It was the Lord that found me. When even my own daddy didn't invite me, Samuel showed me. Even my own daddy didn't invite. It wasn't. It was for the law. I want you to throw your hands towards heaven. We're going to dance in a minute, but we're going to let something die first. Whatever needs to die so that you can dance. I need somebody to be serious in prayer right now. That relationship, you better hear me. That relationship's going to cost you years. I know wherever I speak tonight. If you don't stop crossing lines, it's going to cost you. I know you love ball, but you can't worship it. I know you love making money, but you can't worship it. Come on, I need hands lifted. We're in the oxen and the fatling killing part of this. I need somebody with hands lifted and with tears streaming to say, God, I need my will to die. I need my will to die before I dance. I need to sacrifice. Come on, from the balcony to the main level, from side to side, front to back. God, if there's anything, if there's anything that I'm clinging to that's keeping me from being the worshiper, I need it to die. Your parents might have called you to be an engineer, but God called you to be a preacher and you know it. I want you to get your education, but I don't want you to lose your worship. I will die. Let the auction die. 
Let the fatlings die. If we kill all this, don't you know what it will cost us? But what will it gain? I live by this principle. My best yeses are the result of my best noes. If I'm going to say yes to the things of God, I got to say no to the things of the flesh. Louisiana young people, going into this new year, it's time to turn up our praise and worship like never before. But I promise you it is easier to praise and worship when flesh dies. When ego dies. Come on, you got to be careful football player that you don't have friends that you will puke on the field in front of that you wouldn't dance at church in front. I know I've hit that three times tonight. I don't, it's not a candy stick for me here tonight. <laughs> to the people that when I started talking about relationships, you got nervous. You need to hear me right now. The oddest part about all this, I spoke to the young ministers at lunch today, Brother Weber. The oddest thing about this is knowing that I'm here preaching to you while somebody somewhere else is preaching to my kids. Maybe that makes me too old at this point to be preaching these things. I, but I look at you. I look at young ladies. I looked up. I see you singing. I see you shouting. I see you worshiping. I see my kids in you. I find myself thinking I want somebody to preach to my kids. Don't let anything, don't let anybody drag you away from what you've been called. There's young people under the sound of my voice. You know you're called to be a missionary. You better hear me right now. Nothing else is ever going to satisfy. I don't care how much money you make. I don't care what kind of house you live in, what kind of car you And I believe in you being blessed. But there is no substitute for death of the flesh and worship. I want everybody, we don't believe in praying some sinner's prayer, but I want everybody that trusts what I'm about to say, I want you to repeat after me. Dear God, if there's anything in my life that is keeping me from being the worshiper that you have designed me to be, get it out of my life. Now when the oxen and the fatlings would die, the Bible said they would begin to shout and they would begin to worship. Come on, do you have any shout in you? 
Do you have him in leap in you? Do you have him in dance?
Come on. We're going to change the culture. In Louisiana, it's not going to be abnormal to be a worshiper. It's going to be abnormal to not worship. Come on, you're not going to walk in an LDYM event and somebody say, why are you worshiping? Let's change the culture tonight. It should be so common that if you're not worshiping, somebody ought to be able to look at you and say, why aren't you moving your feet? Why aren't you waving your hand? Why aren't you leaping the jump? Come on, everybody can do something. I want everybody in the building right now to give God your best praise. This is what we do. This is who we are. Come on, it's not weird to worship. It's weird to not worship. It's not weird to dance. It's weird to not dance. It's not weird to shout. It's weird to not shout. This is who we are. This is who we are.
Now you are free, and I want you to praise God like you've been. Come on, some of you literally didn't have the ability a few moments earlier, but there's freedom in this room. There's deliverance. Yes, there it goes. Go. Somebody shout, somebody dance. Come on, freedom is in this room. Freedom is in this room.
No matter what events you come through Louisiana, we always close with this. There's 64 parishes in this state. We're going to leave tomorrow morning and we're going to go across Louisiana. But shame on me if I dance at HYC and I don't dance at home on Sunday. Here's the purpose of this event, that it would translate to the local church. And you ought to make up your mind right now, even if I'm the only one dancing, I'm still going to dance. If I'm the only one shouting, I'm still going to shout. Call me crazy, but I'm telling you, I got something, and I'm taking it home. I don't know if anybody traveled further than Rhode Island to be here. Listen to me. Noel came to our camp two years ago. I had no idea I was driving on the golf cart. And I said, hey, man, where are you from? He said, I'm from Timberton, Rhode Island. And I thought, why are you in Tioga? <laughs> he said, well, I heard about Louisiana camp, saved up the money, and I came. While he was here. If you know Noel, you love him. I preached their youth convention early in the year. God is using him on the campus ministry. This is a soul winner. He is a world changer. He, wa he wanted to come back to Louisiana. So there were some students that started to go fund me and said, we're going to get Noel to Louisiana HYC. Come on, wave your hand. You're right there. All I know is you're... One of the Hereford girls' boyfriend. So he came all the way to Louisiana because even he knows there's no place like Louisiana. And he's going to be here for a few more days, but he's going back to Rhode Island, back to his mission field, and God's going to use him. So here's what he's going to do. He's going to dance for Rhode Island. But what I want you to do is I want you to dance for your city. And I want you to dance for your church. And I want you to let God know, I'm bringing this home. I'm bringing this home. I'm bringing this home. We're bringing this home. Come on, do it right now for your church and for your city. Give him praise. I told Brother James Wilson, he preached today. I'm sure he's tired. I said, but in Louisiana, Brother Ricky, as long as you play, they're going to dance. So Brother James may have to exit stage right, but you dance as long as you want to dance, and you praise as long as you want to praise. But I want you to do it with the intention that this is not an HYC thing. I'm taking this home.
get into it. It's hard to stop. So you do what you want, but I'm going to give him some praise. Shout like you did it, dance like you did it, dance like you did it. 